Hello and welcome to my channel. Skid plate day is finally here. Let's do this. Welcome back and thanks for being here. I am loaded up with parts, tools, and things that I can't even think of right now. Camera gear, microphones, lighting. Because I'm going to film as much of this as I think I can. I am on my way to a small Coast Guard facility where I'm able to uh, work inside and hopefully with a lift. I'm, it's taking me a lot longer than I expected to load all this stuff up. And so um, the facility has been open for about 45 minutes now. And there's only two lifts there, two lifts that would allow me to remove my wheels. So I might not get a lift. We'll see. Uh, I can work on the ground inside comfortably, relatively comfortably, you know, for working on the ground. It's, it's never fun working on the ground. But um, the only reason I need a lift or to get my wheels up or to remove my wheels is because there is a step of this procedure that requires me to remove the fender liners. I didn't just get a skid plate. I got the version that has the uh, the bracing up front and that connects up into I believe the um, the frame member if you can really call it that I, I forget what the proper term is but it's a structural piece up in there a frame rail I think people call it if I have to work on the ground completely I'm certainly prepared to do that although I forgot to bring my good jack stands they've got good enough jack stands there I just prefer mine because of the rubber padding that's on them let me get situated and uh, camera set up, car lifted, and hopefully this will go well. Time has passed and now the plates are in. And that is plates plural. Um, I went ahead and got the tunnel plate as well. I took it some inspiration from the uh, the guys at ECS Tuning who are doing the South America tour in a slammed GTI and they, they got the extra protection and seeing how I have a mild interest in doing some camping which could take me on some dirt roads, not off-roading mind you, but just possibly with a rock or gravel or something like that. I didn't want anything kicked up into my, uh, into my tunnel to damage anything. It's not like it's going to puncture my exhaust, but I don't know. I just put it on there for giggles. Th that plate went in pretty smoothly. The forward skid plate did not. And the right side, excuse me, the left side requires um, the secondary air injection pump to be temporarily relocated to get it out of the way so that that brace can be installed also need to unplug the horn the directions call to remove the horn bracket and everything and that, that just wasn't really necessary in my opinion but then what happened is I got in there the part where it says you need a 10 millimeter triple square to do this no sweat I've got a 10 millimeter triple square but there's not enough room in there to use that 10 millimeter triple square like, because I got the long ones, right, that are used for um, axles. I need to order some stubbies. And so I thought I was going to put everything back together, and I did. I put it all back together and was closing it up, ready to go home, admitting defeat, to place on order some stubby triple square socket bits, whatever you call them. So while I was closing up the right side, I decided there's no interference over there. So I was like, oh, let me throw in the, uh, the, the, the right side support. And once I saw the right side, then I can see how it was that it was supposed to go in on the left. So I decided to go back to the left because I was like, wait a minute, I don't need to remove this thing. So I got in there and sure enough, I was able to get the, the bracket in place without removing this big 10 millimeter triple square that they were calling to be removed. The problem though is that there is no room 
to fit a hex nut on top of one of those sides and I'll show you in the pictures here it just can't be done I tried bending some metal under there and that didn't work uh, the only thing I can think of to do is to do some cutting down there and I just didn't want to do that at this point I don't mind cutting a little bit of sheet metal that's inconsequential but I didn't have the tools I didn't have the time and quite frankly I just didn't feel like it my back was starting to bother me so I put that in and then I continued on with the rest of the instructions putting in the the cross member getting that all bolted in and everything and then I went to install the skid plate actually I did install the skid plate my camera battery might have died while I was doing that I don't remember I get the skid plate all mounted in and then I go to put my fender liners back in and there are some bolt holes that don't line up and I always uh. well these two support brackets that are vertical they're not labeled and I'll have to look at the directions again to see if the directions called out and identified which one is left and which one's right I just took a an educated guess and I guessed wrong <laughs> So I had to take all that crap apart again. That would be the second time I had to take apart the left side, mind you. And um, reverse them and then put the skid plate back in. I'm not walking you through the second part. At this point, I'm a man on a mission. I'm not doing any more videography. I'm, I'm, I'm done with all of that. So um, yeah, so anyway, it's all installed except for one nut. And that is the nut that I said there is no room to get one on there. But realistically, it's it's not critical. This brace is never going to hold the weight of the car. It's just there for extra support during an impact. And one nut on that heavy thing, I think it's an M10, it is, that is strong enough for an impact. I'm not going to worry about it. The skid plates look good. Um, they will be a total pain in the butt for any mechanics who need to remove that thing. It's kind of heavy and um, not nearly as easy to remove and install as, as a plastic splash shield. So uh, I don't know. There might be some mechanics out there hating you for it. If you have to take your car in for work, you might even learn to hate the thing when you're doing your own work. I'm glad that I do my oil changes topside with an extraction tool. So, uh, yeah, I'm not looking forward to when I got to remove that thing. But at least now I know how it goes in and out. I know where all the weird bolts go. I did have a few, a lot of leftover screws. I need to look again at those directions and see what's missing. I don't know why they were there, if they got put in their own accident or what. I'll leave a comment up here telling you. Uh, what they were for. I might have to go in and replace some, some screws. I'll give you a follow-up of how this thing is holding up in time and uh, yeah, I'll tell you what I think a little more, maybe even a follow-up on the installation. All right, sun's in my face. This doesn't look good. It's bad light for me, right? Thanks for being here and I will see you next time. Take care.